Hello there, welcome to Target Radio's podcast with me, Cookie. Every single week we uh, find different people to speak to, mainly musicians, artists in the unsigned realm of music. And what we do, we have a chat with them, find out a little bit more about them, and obviously explore their music. Now, if you are listening to uh, this on iTunes, please, if you get a chance, uh, give us a five-star rating if you can. And please make sure you put some comments in there as well. If we're doing something right, that's great. But if we're not doing something as good and you think we could do something better, then please do leave us a message. Let us know. And if you want anything else in the podcast, again, let us know in the comments box. That will be brilliant. Okay, thank you then. Today we've got a brilliant artist. Have a listen to this. Every Monday night... We'd like to say that, in our opinion, it is not suitable for children... Every Monday night... Or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition... Every Monday night... And every Monday night... Then we have a super sound DJ... Sean Cook... Good people, it is my pleasure to present to you... Sean Cook... The one and only... Sean Cook... (laughs) Hello, hello, and welcome to the show... Hello, 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 welcome to the show... Now, for those of you watching in black and white, this one is in Technicolor. Stand by for action. Oh, Sean Kirk. Oh, you say the nicest things. Well, hello. Welcome to Monday Night. Yes, I said the M word. So how was your Monday? <laughs> oh, it wasn't that bad. Come on, the weather's been absolutely brilliant. Yes, a tad too hot on Saturday. Only a tad, mind. Then after that, it's cooled down considerably. Uh, easy for me to say, considerably. Yeah, yeah it's cooled down a bit. And uh, it's lovely. I've even got the doors open on the studio, so the dog barks. I cannot be held responsible. So how was your weekend? What did you get up to? Did you go for a gig or did you stay at home in the garden, putting your feet in the kids' paddling pool? Now, why didn't I think of that? Yes, I know, Monday. (sighs) It's what your Mondays were made for, though. It's me. We're here till 8 o'clock this evening, bringing you the finest music that I can possibly find. And we've got a special guest. And you're never going to believe who I've got live on the telephone around half six this evening. None other than posted selves, uh, Robert Dye. He's going to be telling us all about his uh, brand new album launch. We'll find out if uh, the, uh, the, the the gang, the band, see what they're up to. And find out where they're gigging next. And we'll find out all the necessary things as well. Like what colour socks do they wear at their gigs. Yeah, I asked the hard-hitting political questions. Okay. 40 years of the Who's Quadrophenia this year. Who's coming to Brighton then? Go on, hands up, hands up. Oh, just me then. So we thought in uh, contrast to that, every Monday up until uh, August the 25th at least, we'll play nothing but The Who from the Quadrophenia album. And I particularly love this track and I know it's one of your favourites. So here we go. Okay. Cookie here for a couple of hours. Here live on Target Radio. Good evening. Welcome. Okay, just to let you know that this evening, around about half past six, we're going to be having a chat with Robert Dye. Yes, that man from Posted South. We're going to find out a little bit about uh, him, the band. And next week, very excited to have Chris Pope on from The Chords UK. So make a mark and a note in the diary for the 8th of July. Then our brother from another mother, Jason Edge. 
from the Electric Stars is going to be with us on the 15th. Looking forward to that one. And young CJ, is formerly of the Regents, he's going to be popping by to have a little chat with us here on the 22nd of July. And we've got the man himself, Mr. Jason Disley. Now we're going to have a pre-recorded chat with uh, Jason. And we're going to be airing that in the next week or so. Should be a goodie. And I'd just like to say thank you very much to my good lady wife, who just brought me a nice cup of tea. And I got a nice smile. Thank you. Okay, you can follow us on uh, Facebook. Target Radio live page for presenters. That's me. And listeners, that's you. We've also got our own Facebook page called Target Radio. And we've got a new one now as well. That's Target Radio Podcasts. Yes, all the fine chit-chat that we do here on the station. We've developed our own podcast. So if you're fortunate enough to have a chat with Cookie, that'd be me. Then you never know, in a couple of weeks' time, you could be uh, hitting the uh, Dizzy Hearts uh, Heart or even the Heights on iTunes and all the other places that you get your audio from. We're on the Twitter at Target Radio 247. We're on Instagram. Still don't know how to work Instagram. I'm trying. And all the other sort of uh, meaningful social media sites. So no excuse for not to keep up with all the going-ons here at Target Radio. And don't forget, we got a free app as well. Hello? Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nikki. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, you crazy man. Oh, we like to try and be crazy here uh, occasionally. Actually, occasionally. Oh, thank we're, you very much. That's very nice. Uh, well, we're a day late, but unfortunately, I weren't going to go on the radio just for you. Um, <laughs> we have none other than the lovely Nikki Top Walker on the telephone, who is celebrating her 21st birthday. It was yesterday, of wasn't it? Of course. Yes. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Don't, don't tell anyone. Okay. They can't tell by your voice and your... Uh, have you been sucking helium balloons again? Oh, don't. <laughs> oh, it's nice to hear from you. How are you? I'm very good. And in front of yeah. thousands of people live on the radio now, oh, uh, they all okay. want to say happy birthday to you, Nikki, because it oh, is... Oh, thank you very well, much. Well, it was your birthday yesterday, and we're just about to do the birthdays. Uh, my little assistant, Ruby's not here. Don't know where she's oh, gone. Oh, that's No, I know. Oh, where is she? I've no <laughs> idea. What's, what's she like, eh? Some oh, sort, bless her. Some radio presenter she turned out to be. Honestly, I'm, I might <laughs> sack her. <laughs> oh, bless her. Anyway, what did oh. you get up to before we, before I go? It's only a quick one. Oh. What did you get okay, up to? Okay, well, yesterday I spent the day with the family, my little family. So That's we fantastic. Just, just done little family things, really. Went to a fete and yep. uh, went to the pub and <laughs> things well, of like course. that. of course. Yeah, so you've got to go to the pub, haven't lovely. you? It was lovely. Excellent. Yeah, no, we had a really nice time, really relaxing, just you know, chill out day. It was lovely, thank you. Excellent, excellent. And did you have a glass of bubbly or something? Um, I did. I did on Saturday. I didn't yesterday. I don't like to do the day before work. I like to be good, so yeah. I get off for of work. <laughs> That's but it. No, yeah. I did on Saturday. I did. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So you celebrated it in style, and the hottest I day did. of the year as well on Saturday. I know Saturday was really, hot. yeah, really, oh, really hot. So because was. of the hotel we were staying in, had aircon. That's all I can say. <laughs> excellent. And you went to see uh, the most, didn't you? Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get to see the most, though. Um, they had a blowout on the M25. No! Um, so, yeah, no, I was a little bit upset, but never mind, it happens, this is what happens. Oh, absolutely, um, so, M25, yeah, no, it, you know, that M25 is yeah, against no, no, us all, there. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, so, no, no, bless them, so I have spoken to, my, um, to, to everybody, you know, no, it's, it happens, it's the way things go, So, and I'm sure they'll be in town again soon, so absolutely. we'll catch up with them. So. Well, a roving reporter, that is Nikki Top Walker, letting us know that there was a blowout on the M25. <laughs> <laughs> on Saturday, uh, two days later, if you've been stuck in that traffic behind a van that's been... You know uh, why. Yeah, you now know why. You can blame our roving reporter two days later. It doesn't matter. Nikki, you have a Good wonderful night. evening. And you, I darling. shall catch up with you a little later. Okay, darling. Take care. Ta-da Thank now. You. Right. There we go. Nikki, top walker there. And I think it's only fair that we do this. It is other birthdays. 
I've no idea where Ruby is, so I'm just going to go on it on my own now. Can I do it on my own? Well, we'll see. Now, do you know, it would have been Princess Diana's birthday today if she was still with us. God bless her. Happy birthday to you, Mom, wherever you are. Missy Elliott. She's a rapper, you know. She can come around and do my rapping presents uh, anytime she likes. She is having her birthday today. Movie actor, Chosen Jacobs. What a great name. He's only a wee 18 years of age. Happy birthday to you. And looking through all of our uh, movie people and pop singers, there's not that many, to be fair. Apart from... Oh, the brilliant, the lovely Debbie Harry. We love a bit of Debbie Harry here on Target Radio. Happy birthday to you, Debbie. I know she tunes in from time to time, honestly, for the New Wave Hour. Right, who else we got? Dan Aykroyd. It's Dan's birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Dan Aykroyd. Daniel Ricardo. He's a racing car driver. Happy birthday to you. And she's popular in the Queen Vic. That's Kelly Bright. Having her birthday today. And uh, for the famous people then, that's it. And let's go on to you. Are you out there in Facebook land? Brian Curlew, your birthday. Happy birthday to you, Brian. Have a great day, mate. Darren Locke. At 45 years of age. Just a spring chicken then. Happy birthday to you, Darren. Alex Fraser, having your birthday today, sir. I won't mention your age of 52 years. Ah. Lee Hazeldean. He's celebrating half a century today. Happy birthday, Lee. Mick O'Shea. Happy birthday to you, sir. I was trying to think of a, an Irish joke there, but I thought better of it. Lewis uh, Richardson. Happy birthday to you, sir. And Simon Oates completes today's birthdays. And let's have a quick gander from yesterday's birthdays then. A uh, good friend of ours is Simon Green. Marco Bassato and Tommy Tucker all having their birthdays yesterday. Alex Braun, Sharon Moss and Kimberly Vespa. Are you sure that's your real name, Kimberly? Happy birthday for yesterday. And of course, the lady of the hour. And she's sucking on those helium balloons, I tell you. Lovely J- Nikki J. Top Walker. Had her birthday yesterday as well. So happy birthday to everyone who's had their birthdays. And if I've not mentioned you, then why not? Honestly, I should be talking about you. If you're having your birthday either yesterday or today, have a great day. Okay. There we go. Posted south there and Stanley. And hopefully on the uh, other end of the line now, we heard a hello anyway. Is that Robert Die by any chance? It is. Hello, Sean. Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm very well, my friend. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Is the weather treating you nice? Oh, it's lovely. I mean, I'm sunburned, but it's all good. <laughs> we don't want to know where. It's a family tea time show, so um, <laughs> keep it keep it in your... Pa- uh, <clears throat> anyway, keep it to yourself. Right, so um, <laughs> it's onwards and upwards then. Posted South uh, are everywhere at the moment. They're all over the interweb, uh, all over Facebook, Twitter, and everywhere else you can possibly imagine. So uh, tell us a little bit about, first before we go into all the uh, good bits, tell us about how Posted South first sort of got on the, uh, shall we say, on the run of the ladder layers. Well, we well, we were um, we were doing, like, live music before, but we were sort of doing it, you know, like, sort of the covers and that sort yeah. of building up, you know. Um, and then after we'd done that, we then got into writing our own stuff, and that's pretty much how we sort of started to sort of make a page in that and get around. Yeah, indeed. And obviously, I've just played one there, which was uh, called Stanley, which is on your uh, last EP, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that was on our last EP. Uh, and that's the only yeah, one I've got uh, so far, because somebody didn't send me anything. But no, don't worry, don't worry. I'm sure it's in the post. <laughs> 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 no, not a hint there. Right, so, Robert, so tell us a little bit about the band, and who's in it, what do they do, etc., and blah, blah. Well, all of us are currently working at the moment. You've got me, who's... Well, I work with family business at the moment. been working with them for years. Yep. 
Um, you got my drummer Louis, who's uh, works works with like a glass fitting company sort of thing. Well, uh, well you, got... you see right through that one then. Well, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You gotta have the puns there, otherwise oh, it just doesn't work. You it know? doesn't. No, what a pain. <laughs> okay, move on. Uh, we've got uh, my bass player Leo, who uh, he currently works for a computer firm at the moment. Is, um, is and it, then you've got my guitarist George. <laughs> who um, works for Anderton's at the moment. Fantastic. And altogether, you are called... Posted South. There we go, and said in such a really great DJ voice. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> so how long have you uh, lads been together? And uh, Were you friends before all of this, or...? Well, me, uh, me, Lou and Leo have been friends for, I mean, donkey's years now. Um, and then... We had our old guitarist, George, uh, uh, George, Joe, a long time ago. Joe, long time um, but, ago? Well, no, not long time ago, but, you know, a <laughs> bit, bit of a while ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he obviously went to uni and obviously it got a bit too much for him, you know? Yeah, indeed. Uh, so he moved on. And then we got George in, who's, who's well, he's young. Well, no, actually, I think they're the same age, actually. They're the oh. same age and uh, he's just, he's fitted right in, so. Excellent, excellent. And so, you know, you're thinking about all the music that you play and everything. So what's your sort of like your go-to heroes in the music business? Who's your sort of main inspiration to music? (sighs) I love that. I love that one. That's a a great one. That's a bloody tough question. (laughs) Uh, I mean, we've got got loads of um, influences, you know, the Who, the Faces... The Jam, the Kinks, the Beatles. You're saying all the right Ocean Colour over. Scene. It, it, it's between, between Britpop and sort of mod as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're sort of sandwiched in the middle there, I believe. Um, you know, listening to your music, you've got a lot of indie going on there, but you've still got that sort of rooted mod sound to it as well, which is rather good. Yeah, I mean, uh, we just want to we just want to release music that's got that same, you know, like the, the feel, like you said, you know, the, yeah. the, the feel. But with a little bit of a modern touch to it as well you know well come on you know we're in we're in the millennium now you know we we've got to move forward a little bit so you've got to put a little twist on things just to make it sound fresh and new and i believe exactly. that you guys are really doing that you know from a sort of an untrained musical ear but obviously a very trained ear when it comes to listening to really good heartfelt music which you guys are often doing you know i mean stanley is a great great song i play that quite often here on the station so i'm gonna sort oh, of split, split that one apart a bit so what's it about what's stanley about is it about a man called stanley or <laughs> i leave that open to interpretation ah oh, said like a true pop star <laughs> rock and roll star or just someone that's evading the question <laughs> I, I i i let people uh i let people look at it the way they want to look at it you know i mean i wrote it for a certain reason yeah but you know i like a lot of people to you know see the songs for the way they see them you know yeah indeed do you know i like a story song if that makes any sense something like you know when uh, ray davis penned you know, like Waterloo, Suns, uh, Waterloo Sunset, for instance. I love a sort of, a, you know, a carry-on, you know, that finishes and uh, starts and finishes within three minutes. And you've got a whole chapter of somebody's life or people's lives in a song. That, for me, makes a great song. What's your feelings on that? I mean, I mean, some of our songs are about real-life situations, you know, like what some of the band members have experienced yeah. or, you know, certain scenarios. I mean... I mean, I'm not saying what one of the songs are. You, you know, one of you can interpret that for yourselves. But one of them's literally about going out to a gig, which one of you know, as I said, they can interpret it that way. Or yeah, yeah, you know. But um, I think the best songs, like you said, the best songs do have meaning, and you know. And then there's some songs that have done really well, and they don't mean anything. No, you indeed, know? It, indeed, it varies. I mean, you take one step beyond by madness. I mean, what's that all about? But it's a great go-to song every single time. I wish I knew myself. It's a great song. I love you know? that song. You know, I know all the words to it, and you know, I can do karaoke to that very well. That's the thing, but you know, the, you know no, no one will ever know what that means. You know, no, I don't think anyone will really, to be fair. But it's a great song, and it's just a, a sim, you know, or lyric, lyrically anyway, obviously very, very simple, and like you say, a hit. Simple, simple. You know, in music wise, I mean, from what we try and do, you know, I think, I think simple's better. You know. Well, it's easier. <laughs> oh, well, and that as well. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to say that really, but uh, it just sort of like slipped out there. So who's no, your? That's um... fine. <laughs> so who's your main songwriter, or do you all share the sort of like the skills there? No, nah, we 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 we're, we're all together. You know, I, I, you know, there's been loads of bands. I mean, you can even use Oasis as an example. There's been bands over the years where they have one songwriter, 
And in all fairness to the rest of the band, it always goes well. In the end, it goes wrong, you know. Yeah. Um, I feel arguments. like if, if you know, even gum. I was to say lots of arguments and things like that, and it usually ends up in blows. And then, and then yeah, I mean, one I, I mean, if you look at if you look at bands like, uh, you know, I know it's off subject, but even if you look at Coldplay, you know, mm-hmm. there's a reason why they've been together so long. Yes, you know, yeah, they all contribute equally, you know, and I, yeah. exactly. And I think it's yeah, way I forward. I mean, obviously, if you're very weak on your songwriting skills, but you have ideas, you're still contributing towards that song, you know. Exactly. So exactly. You know, it all works rather well, and I think it is a way forward. So any band that's listening right now, take a note out of your way page book there. Listen to Robert and see, you know, and, and and try it because you never know, you know, that bass player that really stands there and never smiles and don't move that much because bass players generally are very grumpy. I don't know about your bass player but in general he's, I he, like... he's the jolliest out of all of us oh well there you are <laughs> <laughs> to- totally against the grain there but generally but... both bass players never smile so my my aim in life is when i go and see a live band and i urge everyone that's listening out there now and i know i've got my soapbox last week so i'll just do it very quickly go out there and support <laughs> live music get out there and see the local <laughs> bands and if they're not so local go and visit them anyway because they're blooming good uh, but try and cheer up the bass player if possible, because they always seem like, you know, in a different world and like they don't want to be there. But I'm sure they do, because they wouldn't be there in the first place. And as you quite rightly said, your bass player is obviously the most jolliest one out of them all. Oh, he is. I mean, per- I mean personally, I could sometimes be a miserable side, you know what I mean? It just depends. Oh, I don't believe that for one minute. It's always been jolly when I speak to you, so that's always a good thing. It's always a positive thing. I wouldn't phone you if you were miserable. Goodness me. You know. Uh, you haven't called me on my bad day. Ah, that's probably a Wednesday then isn't it <laughs> oh no maybe, maybe a thursday friday when it feels like the week's dragging on maybe oh yeah mind you monday you know come on it's doom and gloom you just had a lovely weekend off and you're back to the grindstone on a monday and my job obviously to play the great music that you guys work very hard to produce and get out there so it's my job really to play the songs uh to let people know where you're playing your gigs uh albums and things like that and all the goody bits and uh, obviously try and brighten up those old Monday morning blues into a Monday evening success, really. And so no, far, that's we're definitely doing it. something to look forward to on a Monday. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. There's a five pound note whittling its way down the line to you right now. <laughs> there it is. I, could, I was going to put a tenner in, but I'm so tight. You know what I mean? We don't earn a lot no. here. <laughs> Actually, we don't earn anything. Hang on. Hang on. Where's my manager? Where's he? Go- oh, he's, he's gone. He's legged it. He's gone with all the uh, proceeds of uh, the last lot. Right, anyway, rambling on there. So, let's bring ourselves up then to uh, present times. And uh, mm-hmm. you've got some brilliant news. Uh, apparently, you just released an album. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We've just released an album called All Our Lives. Excellent. Uh, we've been, there's a few. There's, there's a couple uh, tracks that everyone's heard already, but they're sort of remastered, if you want to call it that. Perfect. Um, and then there's... There's about eight or seven or eight new fresh songs. Yeah. So, you know, keeps it new, like fresh, you know? Well, that's what we want. We want, we want the freshness in there, but obviously, um, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Oh, Andy Topwalker has just emailed me a little uh, message. So, uh, a question for you guys. So, I'll get on with that in a second. Um, yeah, yeah cool. I'll, I'll do that for you, Andy. Don't worry. He's listening. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell me off if I don't. So, um, so, your new album, how many tracks is on the album? So how many tracks did you yeah, say? Yeah, how many tracks are actually on uh, We album? have 11 tracks currently. Okay, okay. And are you looking to do what with the album? Of course, sell sell the album, of course. Um, so how much is the album, and where can one purchase an album from you guys? Well, you can purchase a physical CD on our website, uh, which is, I think it's about £10, and that's including postage. Wow, so, that's it. You're, you're, lucky days. That's it. You're slitting your own throats here. I mean, a, a man's got to eat, you know. <laughs> Honestly, you'd be, you'd be on bread and water at like £10. That's a, that's a bargain. So get out there now. Uh, find Posted South uh, website. And what's, that, what's your website called? Uh, it's www.postedsouthofficial.com. There we go. One more time for that uh, one person who didn't get a, a chance to get a pen. It is www.postedsouthofficial.com. Is it .com, did you say? Yes, it is. There we go, I remembered. Just about. There we go. He's, <laughs> yeah, it's all right now. He's written it down. Brilliant. Now, just before we carry on with the rest of the interview, as I said, Andy's just wanted to know, um, yep. you're gigging, but what was, uh, what's been the best gig you've done? Why and when? Oh, sorry, and where? Oh. Where was that gig? Uh, 
It's hard because I, I'm the type of person that likes the smaller venues, you see. But if I had yeah. to say as like an overall, yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got Penfest coming up, which is probably going to be amazing and top it anyway. Yeah. yeah. But I think right now it'd have to be supporting Top Loader. It isn't an assembly hall. That was wicked. Now, love that. that is, you know, obviously, you know, name clanging succession there. You know, Top Loader for goodness sake. You know, that's a great indie band of all sorts. And you know, you're, you know, you're supporting them. How did you get oh, that? It was good. It was good. Brilliant. How did you, you get know? that one then, Robert? Uh, we we were well, we were working with promoter, a certain promoter, not long ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they basically just said, look, like we're doing some. Like, it was like a festival day sort of thing. Yeah. And they basically said, would you want to support Top Loader? And I basically said, well, high up, how high up the bill? And they put us, I think it was second before Top Loader. So I was just like, yeah, fine. Oh like, well, you know, yeah, well, I'm not doing nothing. I've washed my hair on Friday, so I'll do it on Saturday. Yeah, no problems at all. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take it quite casually, or were you quite nervous when you were actually uh, performing that night? I, I think the build-up was a bit nervous. Yeah. But when we actually, before we got on, I think we were all quite up for it, you know? I mean, you've just got to go out there and just play, and if you muck up, you muck up. Just get on with it, you know? Well, yeah, and I mean, you know, part of being part of a band, if one of you sort of, like, you know, drops a note or drops a stick or even drops a vocal cord or something, you know, you can cover it up a little bit, can't you, when you're a part of a band? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, as I said, I mean, I, I, I could name a few gigs where I've had a bloody terrible night, but you know what? You live and learn. You get on with it, you know? Well, that's all about life, really, isn't it? You know, you can take that and uh, obviously use that on anything that you do within life. You know, you, you're going to have good, you're going to have bad days, you're going to have, uh, you know, absolutely amazing days, which sounds like you did that evening, you know, you know supporting Top Loader, you know, great. And... Uh. um What's your worst gig then? We might as well go down that line, you know. You've had your best one. What was your worst gig? Oh, the boys are going to be listening. Like, oh, here we go. Here Basically, we, we played. Uh, we played Hope and Anchor. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think it's. Is it Islington? I can't. Remember. I think it was. <laughs> All right. We'll it was go, we'll in, go with that that's one. how much I want to block out that gig. <laughs> uh, it, it was in Islington, and not not that I was flat or vocal wise or guitar or anything, but yeah. I may have uh, had a little slip up. Trying to end a song like a lot earlier. Uh, <laughs> Speeding yeah. it up, were you? <laughs> it wasn't. It, no, do you know what it was? It's like when it's because it was a bit like it was. A, it was it reminded me of the cavern a little bit because oh, it was a, it was underground. It was you know, and when you're playing and you're all hot, like, and this was hot, you know. Yeah. You start daydreaming a little bit, I and I just started doing, daydreaming, yeah. and then I kind of as I snapped back into it, I kind of turned around and my my drummer's just looking at me like no. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! So the one part of the engine room was thinking, "What on earth are you up to?" <laughs> uh, well, I mean, after I mean, after that, I just mentally block it now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> don't even bother. Just don't look at him. Know? That's all we have. To, just just ignore him. You know. Well, I mean, what's, <laughs> he, he don't do nothing. It's, just, it's a couple of blooming drums. You know. You know what they say about drummers. <sighs> no, I'm not going to say what they say about drummers. Just in case he's listening, he probably is. That's it. That's Probably. it. Yeah, he's going to throw a stick right down at the phone at me right now. I can see it. No, don't worry. He'll just throw it at me. Oh, You're all right, fine. then. Yeah, those <laughs> blooming drummers, honestly, they're, you know, they think they own the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're only mucking about. We're only mucking about. So, moving forward, then. So, what's your next gig? We're playing currently. Uh, we've got, we got, well, we've got four gigs over one weekend at the moment. Well, that's rather greedy, but very good. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> But we're playing down, we're going down Devon on Friday the 19th of July to play with the 515s. Now who, um, that is going to be young, one hell of a Young gig. band. I mean, they're younger than us. They're probably about, I think they're about 18, I think, 19. Yes, indeed, yeah. Uh, but we're, we're good friends of them. So we're going down there to play, uh, I think it's on like a boat, I think. All right. Playing okay. on a, a boat down there on the uh, on the Friday night. And then on the same night, we're going back to, I think it's, is it the Palladium? Polivium? I can't remember. It's Polivium, I think. Uh, yeah, something um, like that anyway. <laughs> I think, uh, well, you, you can find it on our page. I don't know. Uh, right. That we're, we're playing that straight afterwards, but then we've got to drive all the way back down from Devon down to London again because obviously we've got Penfest on the 20th. Yes, you have. July the 20th, in fact. Uh, Penfest uh, 2019. And uh, are you on the Saturday, aren't you? Yes, we are. Luckily, because we get to meet from the jam then. Oh, yes, you are, yes, you are, <laughs> and, uh, well, funny enough, on a Saturday, you've got Mondays, as in the Happy Mondays as well. 
Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to watch that set as soon as we finish the you know. That is going to be one hell of a night. That is going to be a great night. And uh, you've also, got, as you quite rightly see, got From the Jam and uh, Goldie looking chain and Craig David as well. I mean, he's made a successful comeback over the last couple of, uh, well, last few months, really, hasn't he, Craig David, to be fair? I prefer, I mean, to me personally, I mean, I, I didn't really listen to him a lot, a lot. No, but, no, um, no. I prefer his new stuff, if I'm honest. I've sat and had a listen and thought, that's actually all right, you know? Well, he's gone a little bit more soulful, hasn't he? Yeah, no, I was because I, I didn't expect that really either. No, no, So it was, it was quite a shock to me. No, indeed, because obviously when we say Craig David, you sort of feel more sort of like the sort of garagey type Craig David. But no, he's gone yeah. more soulful now. And uh, yeah, he's quite an enjoyable singer, really. You know, he's got some really nice vocals there. So. Um, Great. It looks like you're going to have a great evening playing there. Now, uh, oh, Andy Topwalker's been back on again, and he says, you're going out f- for a night, okay? You can choose five right. people to join you. Where would you, Where are you going? Who and why? He loves these ones, doesn't he? Wait, so, so, so that again for me? Right, okay, so I'll read it out. Um, <clears throat> Andy Topwalker, you're going out for a night, and you can choose right. four people to join you. Now, I'm just going to, uh, you know, ab lib here a little bit. I suppose right. they can be alive or dead, famous or non-famous. Where are you going? Who are you going with and why? Oh, that's a tough question. I mean, one person, if we're talking about when he was younger, yep. I'd probably say Weller because I reckon he'd be... I think he'd be funny, you know? Oh, yeah, I think definitely. He'd, he'd be a good laugh. Yep. And he likes to drink, so... Absolutely. I think he'd be a good laugh. Not now, um, obviously, but then, yes. I think the other one would have to be Marriott because, I mean, he'd probably he'd drink us all under the table, but I think it'd just he'd be just another character there, you know? Well, absolutely, and I, and I believe that he was the first to get the round in, so he wouldn't mind so much, would you? Do you know what I mean? I can't complain. <laughs> um, well, did he two? say four, did he? Yeah, four. So you got two? Four. Two more to go. Okay. Uh, dead or alive? <sighs> and that's not a reference to Pete Burns, by the way. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I ah, said so you're, you're of an age, it. but if you are of an age that you don't know what the heck we're talking about, then look it up on Google later. <laughs> um, oh, that's bloody hard. Well, two more people. I know. Okay, for the sake of it, yeah. just for the sake of it, I'll say. Oh, that's all right. I'll say Liam Gallagher on the basis yeah. of I think he would make us chuckle the whole night well, just by well, his antics well it's either that or you'll end up in a great mighty ruck it's one of the two or, or, really? the, or that but we can leave him to it and just leg it the other way so well, it's fine yeah. we'll just we'll take the, the first half of the night from him that's fine <laughs> then leg it and leave him with it leave him with the bill <laughs> and then if I had to if it was one more person that I would say music wise and that I would want to meet if I wanted to talk about music over a drink yeah I mean it'd have to be Lennon you know, it, it'd have to be. Just just for his songwriting, yeah. you know, it'd have to be John Lennon. Definitely, okay. definitely. Brilliant. That's, that's a good answer, actually. And it's like four fine people as well, you know, dead or alive. Now, uh, just quickly, because obviously a lot of people are probably on your Posted South uh, site right now uh, mm-hmm. through Facebook. And there's four cheeky chappies sitting, uh, sorry, standing there by a brick wall with uh, lots of spray graffiti on there. So uh, as I'm looking at it from left to right, if you can tell me... Who's who there? So we've got a sort of names and pictures to their, you know, to the credits there. So the guy with the black jacket on, it's a Fred Perry, and other brands are available, is who? Okay, so from... Look, I'm trying to remember the bloody photo myself. Okay. There we go. Okay, so in the Fred Perry black jacket is our drummer, Louis. Okay, and next to him in a Fred Perry uh, sort of jersey-type sweatshirt thing... That is moi. Is that you? Look at that you. That is me. Yeah. Look at you. I usually have shorter hair, so for me, that was a shock. That day was you pretty almost, shocking for me. You almost look like Neil from The Young Ones. And then we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got uh, another guy there. He looks a little sort of uh, a Greeky Italian looking to me. Italian. That's, uh, that's Leo Gallione. Oh, there he is. And the last one looking super cool and can't be bothered to look at the camera. He's looking elsewhere. He's probably found a nice sort of looking lady or something and he's thinking right i wonder what i'm gonna to say to her to chat her up who's that <laughs> that's georgie boy there he is georgie boy looking fine <laughs> and suave there so there you go uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, if you're on their page right now see what i've done there because um <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry i've just read something else here andy what you like why aren't you here and asking these questions in person rather than 
emailing me them all. Um, I was just about to say, I've no idea what I was going to say now. It's totally throw me. But you're all on uh, Posted South's uh, page now on Facebook. You, you know who's who, which is rather brilliant because they didn't bother to tag their picture. Right, that's what I was getting down to. Now, Andy said, are you going to have all four of them in one room? <laughs> Four of us in one room. Oh, God. As in Paul Weller <laughs> and uh, all the other ones that you mentioned, including I, Liam. I would I would probably have them in one room, but I'm worried a little bit about Liam Gallagher and Weller together. Yes. Because I don't think in real life they really like each other. So, you know. Well, there's only one way to find out. Well, actually, yeah, after ask, uh, we'll probably ask Paul. We'll ask Paul for you and uh, we'll get back to you on that one. I'll, That's use, why I'll use my <laughs> secret spy. Um, <laughs> which is uh, Tufty Carver. There we go. We'll ask Tufty. Not so secret now. One knows. Ah, right. I shouldn't have let that one slip out. Okay, we'll ask him if he actually really likes Liam. He'll probably give us a no comment. You know what he's like, you know? But you never know. You might even get an answer to that one. So, new album, touring absolutely everywhere by the seams of everything. And uh, are you enjoying life at the moment? Oh, yeah, I'm loving it. You know, just playing playing in different places. Because obviously, we've just been playing in London at the moment. But to get out in, like, Devon and, you know, Buckinghamshire at Penfest, it's, it's brilliant. You know, it's, it's yeah. a good laugh. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And are you coming down to Brighton any time in the Quadrophenia sort of moment? I think it's August the 25th, if memory serves. Are you coming down to Brighton at all? Uh, August 25th? Do you know what? Yeah, I probably could. Well, I'm probably looking, could. I'm looking at your diary now for you, and uh, by the looks of things, <laughs> you are available. I'm looking there. Uh, obviously, you've got a different diary to one that I'm looking at, possibly. So you've got <laughs> nothing on that night. So, um, yeah, it'd be nice to come and see you and uh, come and have a, a little drinky poos, which is probably a coffee outside the Modern World Cafe. You know, that's our, you know, our DJs here now. You know, we're... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, you know, we, we hit the hard stuff. You know, we might even go for a cappuccino and be naughty. You never know. But I'm actually going <laughs> to see The Truth that night as well. So, um, you know... Oh, I've seen them. Good band. Oh, good band, good band. Everyone's seen them apart from me. But have you ever interviewed Mick Lister? No, see? No, no. I've not. No, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll, you, you'll love them, though. They're a good band. Oh, I band. love their music. I've got all their stuff. And Andy will tell you, I uh, pulled out a 19... I think it's 1982 original vinyl EP of uh, The Truth. And he went, wow, look at that. And I went, yes, it's mine. Put it back now. <laughs> <laughs> well used and well worn, but well enjoyed. <laughs> so, yeah, I love the truth. But, um, you know, going back to sort of unsigned bands and artists such as yourself and, um, you know, bringing up, shall we say, the musical, uh, the music now, um, like I said, is brilliant what you guys are doing. And other guys like yourself, you know, they're out there doing it next to nothing. You know, you're not earning a brass, you know, brass farthings. You're not earning much, but you're doing it mm. because you love the music. Oh, yeah, it's all about the music. I mean, any young band, well, I hope most bands will say, like young bands, that, yeah, it's all about having fun, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, obviously, any money you're, you're getting in, you know, obviously, it's probably just covering the expenses, petrol, and obviously, you're doing your sort of like EPs and now onto the albums and stuff. Any money you're getting through is probably just going straight back into the band uh, band's pot. Is that, is, is that right? Well, I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the way we look at it now is just any money we make is a bonus. We're not, you know, that's not our eyes set, you know. It's, it's if we make money, then happy days. If we don't, then we don't. Absolutely, just, you know. yeah. And that is a good mindset to have because I, I believe that there's quite a few bands out there, and artists as well, they're on a sort of mm. like, uh, shall we say, the uh, unsigned label, i.e. they're not signed that want to make it big and have these sort of like um, visions of grandeur that they're going to be amazing mega stars. And, you know, I mean, it is really a minefield out there. But most importantly, 99.9% yeah. .9 and probably a bit more as well don't make it. And they give up too easily. And I think it's a real shame yeah. because there's a lot of talent out there that sort of like just sort of like, well, you know, I've had a couple of years of it and I ain't made nothing from it and I can't be bothered anymore. And that's a crying shame because it's the wrong mindset really, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. If you you know, if you're if you're gonna look for that label or you're aiming to get signed by a label or whatever, you're not yeah. gonna make it. No, of course not. Most no. bands nowadays or even bands all big bands you've heard of, they weren't signed based on them looking for that. No. They were signed by chance and it usually is chance, you know? Well it's right place, right time with the right persons and uh, exactly. pair of ear rolls, really, you know. I mean, do you think Oasis were in a pub with six people and one of them turned out to be Alan McGee? Yeah, absolutely. You know? And as they say, the rest is history. 
Exactly. But, you know, it, it, it's by chance that you're going to get signed, and then being signed doesn't automatically mean that you're going to be rich and famous. You know, you could be signed and do nothing for a year and then just be completely washed up. You know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, if I, as I said, if we were to ever get signed, the only thing I'd look forward to is just playing bigger venues. That's That's my main thing you know and i think that's a really good mindset to have to be honest with you robert because uh you know it, it, you're not looking at the pound notes or you know you've, got, you've not got the pound signs in your eyes you've got the music full uh the music in your eyes you know as well as in your ears and hopefully coming out of your mouth at the right time as well this time you know not don't no nor no more daydreaming you know <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh, never again <laughs> never again well that drummer's uh, drumstick's gonna go somewhere where you really don't want it to go and you will hit those high notes then um <laughs> <laughs> so no, because to... honestly, tomorrow when I see him Wednesday, he's going to be like, "Rob, what is going on?" I'll be like, "Nothing, no, nothing, nothing at all. No, 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 no." I was, I was, <laughs> I was drunk when I was on the uh, on the line to a cookie that night. You know, honestly. Uh, you know, I, I won too many in the afternoon at work or something. Yeah. Anyway, moving <laughs> forward, when it comes down to your songwriting, let's go back to that for a second. Now, uh, as you say, yep. it's, it's a collaboration of all four of you. Who is? <laughs> who would you say is the main sort of uh, songwriter? Or like I say, do you really all sort of put twenty five percent in each? It's more the fact of we come into where we rehearse. Someone says, "Oh, I've got this idea." And okay. whether it's our bass player or whatever. So for, I'll give you an example. So our bass player will come in and say, I've got this bass line. Yeah. He'll play the bass line and then we'll build it around that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, as I said, I mean, I'm 25%. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it depends on who comes up with the main sort of riff. And it does vary between each person. So yeah, I, as I said, I don't know if I could say 25%. But I could say it's very, it's pretty much equal. Gotcha. I would say. So is it the music first and the lyrics later, or does sometimes a lyric comes into your mind and you think, right, it's build something around the lyric, or you know? I've only ever had that with one song, which was an old song, which we have we haven't really played a lot anymore. Right. And what, um, what song was that? That was the climb. Uh, that was just lyrics first, and gotcha. then it came the music. Well, that is really handy because I've got that song. And I am going to play that at the end of our interview. So there we go. A rarity for you, listeners. It's one uh. of uh, Rob, Robert's and the rest of the gang's uh, pretty much only song that they built the music around the lyrics. Because they, they, I'll be honest with you, I've spoken to a lot of bands and artists out there uh, over the last few years. And I've often asked that question, what comes first? And, you know, you know, if I was to keep a score, I would say it's about 50-50, really, where... Uh, some bands will say, oh, it's definitely the lyrics first, and then another band or an artist will say, no, it's definitely the uh, lyrics or definitely the music. You know, it's, yeah. it, it's literally one hand will say one thing, and on the other hand, someone will say the complete opposite. So, um, mm. But when you're writing lyrics yourself, I mean, are you notepad taker, or are you more sort of uh, up-to-date now with your iPhones and necessary bits and pieces like that? I mean, I used to use, like, paper and stuff, but the thing I realised, when I was writing all my lyrics on paper, I was yeah. just losing the paper. <gasps> so it eventually got to the point where I've got a, I've got a Mac in my room where I do, like, I listen to the mixes and things like that. So sure. what I do now is I keep a whole folder of lyrics so I know that if I write something, I'm not going to lose it. Of course, absolutely. And don't lose them either, because I know, uh, going back to Paul Weller, when he was writing, obviously for the jam and everything, that it went, mm. once he wrote everything and they recorded it, he just threw them all away. <laughs> and do you think now, when you look back at it, he's thrown all of his original lyrics to sort of like some of the brilliant music that he's come up with in the past sort of uh, 40 plus years of the jam and everything. Can yeah. you imagine now what they would fetch at auction? Someone's got them in their loft. No, he Maybe threw them. He actually <laughs> threw them away. He doesn't know. What, like in a bin? In a bin. I think he ripped them up, threw them away, burnt them, whatever the case may be. I don't think anyone's got original jam lyrics at all because Paul Weller was a chief songwriter, obviously, for the uh, for the group. I know, um, yeah. I know Bruce uh, penned a few, and I know that Rick Buckler penned a couple as well. But, however, you know, 90% of it was from Paul Weller, and I know that Paul Weller just threw all of his lyrics away once he'd, uh, once he'd finished with them. I suppose uh, the insight of it was that he thought, well, okay, well, we've done it now, let's move on. And his motto was that all the way through his life, up until now. He never looks back, he always looks forward, so perhaps keeping pieces of paper with his lyrics on weren't a thing that he wanted to do. That's crazy. Absolutely. So keep all, you never know, keep all your lyrics, okay? 
Oh, I will after hearing that. Absolutely. And remember, <laughs> who told you that? And remember, when you do become rich and famous and you do start selling your scripts to Christie's down in London and everything, they fetch a mighty, a mighty sum of money. Remember, poor old Cookie at the other end of the phone here. You know, I don't mind donations. You know, donations are extremely popular here at Target Radio. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we get hold of Post Itself? Obviously, we've, uh, you know, exploded people's minds of going onto the... Uh, onto the Facebook page, but are there any other places that we can worship you there? Yeah, I mean, we've got Twitter, Insta, very much anything at the moment. Yeah. You can, you can find us on if you, Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, Spotify, anything really. There you can we find go. us on. Brilliant. Lovely. Okie dokie. Right, now, obviously, you haven't played this song in a while, and I'm going to let you introduce it, as I do for all of my artists and bands that I speak to here on the radio. But before we do that, I'd just like to say thanks ever so much indeed to Robert Dye there from Post It South. Come on! Woo! It's just me here, by the way, but, uh, you know, I'm pretending I've got a house full, but uh, no, no, they're not listening. No? All right, then, thanks. Lovely. Right, okay, just me then, but I really appreciate your time this afternoon, this evening, and uh, I wish you the continued success that you seem to be having for you and the rest of the gang there. And uh, never know, I might see you down in Brighton outside the Modern World Cafe. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in my diary. I'll absolutely. Well, like I said, you've got nothing else on, on that day. Um, <laughs> 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 but give my best and obviously my love to all the uh, gang there uh, at Posted South, and I'm sure that you'll have continued success wherever you will go. Thanks ever so much indeed. Now, your job now, young man, is uh, don't mm-hmm. go in a daze, okay? Don't, don't keep with me here. I want you I'm to in. now, I want you to introduce in your best <laughs> radio DJ voice, The Climb <laughs> by Posted South. There you go. There, 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 there's your link. Ready? Yep. Go. This is Posted South, and the song is called The Climb. Thank you very much indeed for all your kind hair words, and we'll see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel.